Hello everyone, this is Erica with Aurora Heart Healing here with another video. Today I wanted to talk about how to feel your feelings. I know this is going to sound a little bit weird, but I think that a lot of people have a really rough time knowing how to feel what they're feeling, how to understand what it is that's coming up for them in any given moment, any given time, any situation. So today I was at a business meeting and I took my friend to this group where we go and we meet other entrepreneurs and hopefully we connect with them and we're able to create bonding connections to where they can send their clients to us and vice versa. And while I was there, I am super intuitive, very em empathic, so I can feel the energy around me. And if you ever need help with separating energy, go to my separation of energy meditation down in, the, um, in my other videos. But I can sense that. I've gotten to the point where I can sense it, but I also have my own protective bubble to where it doesn't affect me in the same way. So I'm sitting there and my friend is kind of having a panic attack and I'm looking at her like, are you going to be okay? And she's kind of like, I don't think so. And I'm like, okay, we'll work through this. So I asked her permission. I helped clear the energy for her at that moment in time. But this is the reason why I am actually doing this video today, because creating that emotional awareness, that deep understanding of what it is that we're feeling at any given moment is what helps us move through the emotion instead of getting stuck in the emotion, which then therefore pauses progress, which therefore stops connection, stops relationship, stops forward movement. And it was really interesting to me because just in that moment, I was like, oh, this person is feeling this, 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 and this, and I could pick it out of them and understand it for them and then share it with them, what it is that's coming out. And then they're like, oh my God, that's totally what's happening right now. And it's like, yeah, that's what you're experiencing practicing emotional awareness how does one do that because when I first started this journey I was a numaholic and I'm gonna say that to the fullest extent I smoked weed three to four times a day um, I've never been a drinker but weed was my default because I could smoke it and my feelings would be better and alleviated instantly but when I weaned myself away from it, when I started to really deepen my connection with myself and my energy field, I really started to understand that it was easier for me to feel the feelings through the filter of weed because it was numbed down. It wasn't that huge intensity that emotion can have when you have layer on top of layer on top of layer on top of layer pushing it down. And one of the practices that I have, so I'll show you this, you won't be able to see it, but here is like eight pages, 16 pages of emotions. And all of these emotions have definitions. Um, Anybody that knows who I am and that talks to me on a regular basis, they know that I am currently going through divorce and no one ever goes into a marriage thinking I'm going to end this in divorce. I least of all, in all honesty, I didn't really want it. And I am practicing acceptance, understanding, and just moving on because I'm not going to beg. So through this process, I have been extremely vigilant of what I'm feeling, as well as my two girls and my son as well. 
while I process, there's been a couple of times where if anyone has ever had like a pounding in your chest and like almost like a pounding in your ears or maybe even shallow breathing, you know that this is actually an intense emotional reaction that is showing up physically in your body. And a lot of people will allow that intensity to scare them off from, okay, I'm going to go distract myself. I'm going to get away from this feeling. I'm going to move away from it. Well, when we lean into it, love it and understand it, it's a lot easier to process. While I was sitting in that restaurant with my friend and a room full of 50 different people and different energies, I became hypersensitive to her. And I picked out what it is that needed to be looked at for her. In my case, I take a break I sit back and I become hypervigilant with me. And I will literally ask myself, what am I feeling? And anyone that wants to do this practice, take a nice deep breath in and breathe out. That inhale and exhale connects you to your body. It helps ground you into yourself and who you are. Okay. When you have that moment where maybe your body feels like it's buzzing or maybe you have this anger. Have you ever seen someone that's so angry that their their face twitches? I have. And I know that the reason why they're having such a physical reaction is because they have the anger that they have right now, but they also have a long line of anger that they did not allow themselves to recognize ever, if ever recognize. So take a moment, take deep breaths in, ground yourself into your body, recognize that you are still breathing. And in that moment, ask yourself, you can use a chart. I have the wheel of emotions because we have over 160 emotions in our body. I carry, I, I look at a lot of different charts, especially when I'm having a hard time identifying, self-identifying what I'm feeling. Brene Brown, 80, 87 human experiences and emotions. This is a wonderful chart as well. I look at that sometimes. I've gotten to a point where I don't have to look at the charts as often, but let's put this as an example. I kept feeling this tired, heavy energy. Super tired, super heavy. So I connected to myself using breathing technique in and out. What am I feeling? What am I feeling? And then I went down my definition of emotions list. Am I feeling abandoned? No, it didn't feel right. So as you say each emotion, you'll start to recognize what it feels like as you say it. So right now, in your breathing, in your exercise, maybe you can say, am I feeling abandoned? If you feel lighter, you might be feeling abandoned because your body recognized, oh, thank you so much for telling me what I feel because you needed to know, but I know, but you don't. So that lightness and keep going through. For, for me, that emotion was the emotion of feeling deflated. And deflated is literally, I think of it as a tire. It's tired. It's It's got no air. It's 
it's got no pressure in it. It doesn't really want to keep moving forward, but it's doing it because it has to deflated. And I thought about it and I was like, oh, I'm feeling deflated. Okay. And that recognition brought in a sense of peace to me because I understood and recognized, acknowledged what it was that I was feeling. Um, through this whole divorce, I thought uh, I woke up one night super panicked. And it's interesting because there's been a couple of nights that I've woken up like that and I directly related it to him. But it wasn't him when I truly tapped into myself and when I truly looked into the emotions behind it, I found that this was a pattern within my life of attracting men that were not emotionally available or emotionally secure enough to share what they were feeling. It was more of a glaze over. So I, I, when I woke up panicked, I knew that I felt panicked because I've really understood what panic feels like in my body. And I said, okay, where's this panic coming from? I thought of my soon-to-be ex-husband, and it was a no. And I was like, what the heck? Where is this coming from then? I don't understand. And then I went back, and I thought of another ex, and then my body felt alleviated. And I was like, oh, this panic comes from another person that did the similar detachment style where they just withdrew completely emotionally and didn't care to tell me that that was what was happening. It was just, well, you did something wrong, so I'm just going to shut it off and no more that I'm, I'm done. We don't, we don't talk about it. There's nothing to say. And through that, I was like, oh my gosh, I felt panicked at that time too. Well, once I realized that panic and where that original panic came from, I felt a wave of exhaustion come over me. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm tired. I'm sleepy. I want to go to bed. So I went to bed. A couple nights later, I woke up after like five hours of sleep. I've been consistently getting five to six hours some nights a little bit more, some nights a little bit less, depending on how much energy work and how much introspection I have done in that day on how I am feeling. And during that day, I had been, we, we like that day we had signed papers and we were like really moving forward very quickly. And to me, it was like, wow, like this person just doesn't care. And I felt the emotion of unworthy. And why did I know it was unworthy? Because I went through the list. Am I feeling fill in the blank? Am I feeling contempt? No, I don't feel disdain for them. I don't feel scorn for them. Um, I even even I even looked at hatred. Do I feel hatred toward them? No, I don't feel hatred. I did find compassion, which is interesting because when you are overly compassionate to someone else and the way that they feel, it can negatively negatively impact you as well. And I can go into that very deeply. You would want to book a session with me so that you can understand what that means, because this is just a video right now. But through my work, I help and teach people how to understand and feel what they feel and understand their emotions, how they physically affect them. Earlier, I worked with someone that deals a lot with disgust. And when I said, okay, this is the emotion disgust. And she's like, well, I don't, I can't connect with that. And I said, okay, close your eyes, take a moment. 
And you can do this too right now. Take a moment to just breathe into your body. And as you feel, maybe your hands tingle, your body just feel more grounded within itself. Think of the word disgust. For me, when I say the word or think of the word disgust, it makes like a little knot in my throat. Kind of like I want to throw up. Disgust. And that's where it shows up for me. For her, it was a little different. It was like a pit, stomach pit st feeling, like a almost dropping, she said, like a roller coaster when you drop, it's like disgust in your tummy. But every person is going to experience their emotions differently. Let's look at, um, I'm going to do a little thing. I'm going to intuit what emotion needs to be said for the majority of people that are listening right now. And I'll make this timeless. So whoever listens to this at any point in time can connect to this emotion, failure. Okay, failure. And I'm going to give you a definition of failure. One who falls short of success or achievement in something expected, attempted, desired, or approved, non-performance of something due, required, or expected, deficiency, can be a person who is insolvent or bankrupt. Okay. So a, a well-adjusted person can admit their flaws and their faults, and a poorly adjusted individual can feel threatened by the undesirable traits such as failure. Okay. So failure is the emotion. So with me now, you're going to take a nice deep breath in. If you want to close your eyes, do that and breathe out. Till you feel like your lungs are completely empty. Breathe in again. And think of the emotion failure. And say it a few times, failure. Failure, failure. Notice any movement in your body. Notice if there's any pings in your body, any places that might hurt, any places that you, you might feel like, oh, that doesn't feel comfortable. Discomfort. And then I want you to lean into it and notice that piece where it feels uncomfortable or that discomfort and leaning into it, failure. And as you identify that emotion, there becomes a sense of alleviation that comes with that emotional connection. And if that feels too uncomfortable, I want you to imagine that you are sending that space liquid gold light. And that space is just being filled with the liquid gold light that is just circulating throughout that space. I'm going towards my chest area because for me, failure shows up right in between my chest. It's, it's a very tight feeling. It's kind of like almost achy a little bit. So sending that emotion, love, compassion, grace, light. And then notice how it feels to have connected to that emotion. Did you feel any alleviation? Did something rise up in you? Some people say that they feel like pressure comes up when they're when they're bringing up the emotion and then it gets released, alleviated. If you can connect your failure, the emotion of failure to a specific moment in time, you can actually heal that specific emotion in that moment in time. You're basically essentially time traveling into the past clearing an energy of the past. 
Let's try another one, okay? All right. Oh, guilt. Oh, guilt. You're so fun. All right. So we're going to take a nice breath, breath in again because we have released that failure, whatever failure that felt in our body. Now we're going to connect to the emotion of guilt. And guilt is the feeling of having done wrong or committed an offense. Culpability, legal or ethical. Conduct that involves wrongdoing, crime or sin. Failure to respect one's duty. Deserving punishment, falling short of the standards he sets for himself or she. Guilt can be a useful emotion because it can lead to the correction of an error or and or reparation of damage when it does not lead to redirection of effort or is focused on self-condemnation and self-devaluation instead of on future improvement, it can become pathological. Hmm. It is common for one to assume guilt for the wrong behavior of another. And this says parents, um, divorce, death, becoming a victim, essentially. This is, it's really cool because I have definitions of this. So it tells you all over. So severe guilt can actually cause depression. And it's an actually very unproductive and even harmful emotion if not taken responsibility for when we feel that emotion. So we're going to play with the word guilt, the emotion of guilt. So as you connect into yourself, And even just sitting in a relaxed state, think of the word guilt, guilt. Feel the vibration that comes from that word guilt in your body. If you can connect to a memory, a moment in time, where you felt guilty. And I'll share what I feel. What I feel is stinging all over my arms. It's almost like a stinging energy of like, ugh, you did this. Guilt. So take a moment. And Maybe you can ask, is there anything else we need to know about this guilt? Or anything else that I need to know about this guilt? Listen for any message that might come through, an image, a sound, a feeling. Lean into that. Guilt. Hmm. Comes up to mind um, for me is being accused of not caring enough for my my uh, ex-partner's child. And that's really a source of guilt for me because I felt, I thought I did a lot and I tried to always incorporate this person into my life, but unfortunately they didn't want it from me. They wanted it from someone else or, or from other people. And that became a big source of guilt for me. So I'm connecting to that right now as a very, very recent guilt. And it's something I've been actually working with, which is funny because this is what I've picked. So hopefully this resonates with anybody else, but use your own experience as to what guilt is like for you. And through that guilt... Also, taking responsibility, which is not self-condemnation, like you messed up. It's how did I or how could I have? And not beating myself up at all, because I do believe that I did everything I could to love, cherish, care for 
an, another human being as if they were mine. And through that, letting it go is breathing it out, maybe sharing light to that part of you that's stingy for me, however it shows up for you, whatever feelings come up for you, connect to it. Don't push it away and say, okay, that's a lot. Because when you first start doing this, it will be a lot. Because not very many people have actually sat down and built that self-awareness of how guilt feels in their body. And the more that you understand how that guilt feels, the more that you connect to it, the more that it is alleviated within your system. Okay? So I hope this video helps you learn how to connect to your emotions. I'm going to leave my session link in the description below. I hope that if you need help, I will put in my Zoom connection call and we can talk about it. I do free consults. And if you want to know more and you actually want to experience a session where you yourself gets to understand how these emotions are actually physically affecting you. And I will intuitively find the emotions, show them, tell you them, and then you get to understand them, connect to them, feel them, and release them. Then you'll have a deeper understanding of not only what I do, but what your body is doing as well. Each time you release these vibrations, it will get easier, my friends. I guarantee it because I know anyone that's had a divorce, I've, I've never done it before. I've had breakups, but this is a whole new realm. It's a whole different type of pain because you don't go into it thinking that you're going to end. You think that this is going to go on forever, that you planned your future with this person I mean, even for me, I'm like, oh, great. Now I have to reevaluate my whole future, <laughs> which actually another emotion that you might be curious to learn about is death of a dream. The death of a dream that you had for the future. So if you want to learn more, and I hope you do, click the links below, schedule a session, or you can have a connection call so that we can talk. Have a wonderful day. Thank you and share, like, and subscribe.